Vladimir Putin has ruled over Russia for nearly two decades. But there's mounting speculation that he might have Parkinson's or some other neurological disorder. The debate about succession is more on a kind of biological time clock. Now the big question is, when Putin is gone, who will succeed him? I would expect that Putin will not nominate a leader to replace him until the last minute. We decoded Putin's inner circle and his opposition to figure out who could succeed him and what they would mean for Russia's future. Experts told us Sergei Shoigu is among the most extreme of Putin's men. He's Russia's defense minister and one of the architects behind the war in Ukraine. Putin and him are almost always side by side. Shoigu represents the kind of deep Russia, the kind of romantic Siberian tribes going on hunting trips with Shoigu. That kind of was part of the branding of, of Putin as a man of the people, a man who understands the breadth and depth of Russia. And Shoigu's used his time as the head of the emergency situations ministries to build his own brand. He traveled the country for two decades, announcing rescue efforts after natural disasters, telling people their government had everything under control. And Russians began to trust him. He was the second most popular politician after Putin. Over the years, Shoigu has had many wins like leading Russia to victory in annexing Crimea and helping Bashar al-Assad remain in power. But time is not on Shoigu's side. Shoigu is himself 67, Putin is 69, so that's not a big difference. I would assume that Putin will want to hand over power to somebody who is going to be in power for a long time. He's going to want to go to the younger generation. Somebody like this man, Dmitry Kovalev, the 36-year-old head of Putin's presidential administration department. He was spotted having an intimate conversation with Putin at Russia's Victory Day parade. He's a new guy. He's not biased towards any particular member of the existing elite. And being new may just be his biggest asset. Putin was only 47 years old back in 1999. He was very charismatic. He was very quick on his feet in talking to journalists and talking to the public. That was an important part of his path to power. But now Putin is 69 years old. So the age factor may be more relevant than ever. Even Putin has said he'd want someone young to succeed him. This clip made the rounds online. People noted his hunched position, his firm grip on the table, his fidgeting hands and feet. He just looks generally uncomfortable. The Kremlin has repeatedly denied the claim that Putin is sick. Which brings us to 60-year-old Sergei Kirienko. He came to prominence already in the, in the 1990s as a banker, promoting economic reforms. Since 2016, Kirienko has been the first deputy chief of staff of the presidential executive office. More recently, Putin put him in charge of rebuilding territory Russia took from Ukraine. Знамя победы стало символом борьбы с фашизмом и с нацизмом. Putin surrounds himself with people who display loyalty. Kirienko is part of that team. But Kirienko proved that long before Russia invaded Ukraine. Kirienko was in charge of domestic politics, organizing the election campaigns, so that puts him in a powerful position. Dmitry Medvedev, who was handpicked to be president from 2008 to 2012, has historically been much less hostile towards the West. Unlike Putin, he was not a member of the Communist Party, so he is the first post-Soviet leader that Russia has seen. Welcome, my friend and partner. Medvedev met with then-President Obama and signed a treaty that aimed to curb the spread of nuclear weapons. 
but Putin only allowed him to serve one term. People saw Medvedev as just a shell, a puppet figure for Putin. Since then, Medvedev has been changing his tune. He's been very aggressively attacking the West and defending the war. He's even said that Russia is saving the Ukrainian people. Sergei Sobyanin has been much less vocal about the war. The mayor of Moscow for the last 12 years, he's proven to be another viable candidate. He's popular, he's well-known, and he's a competent manager. And three years after he took office, annual investment in Moscow had grown by 50%. Experts say Moscow's economy accounts for roughly 40% of Russia's GDP, which makes him a pretty powerful figure. So Byanin comes from the main oil-producing region of Russia, the Tumen province, where he was governor from 2001 to 2005. So presumably he also has good connections with the oil industry. And the war in Ukraine is giving Sobyanin a new opportunity to get involved. Putin has asked major Russian cities to help rebuild newly occupied territory in Ukraine. Moscow has been assigned to the Luhansk People's Republic. But rebuilding is dangerous. A car bomb killed a Russian deputy head on June 24th, and again on July 11th. That'll be a test of their loyalty to patriotism. That presumably would be one path into power. But even if Sobyanin doesn't double down in Ukraine, he could take over if Putin leaves without naming a successor. But there's also Alexei Navalny. People even outside Russia already recognize his name. Alexei Navalny. Alexei Navalny. Alexei Navalny. Alexei Navalny. That's because he is Putin's biggest critic. Alexei Navalny is a lawyer and political activist who created a grassroots movement to attack corruption in Russian officialdom то мы оставляем за свое право еще раз обращаться напрямую к москвичам и призывать их в том числе к участию в акциях гражданского неповиновения. The now 46-year-old opposition leader was barred from running for president in 2018 because of a fraud conviction which many saw as political payback. During my campaign, I spent every fifth day in the jail. So now I'm kind of, you know, used to it. But experts say Navalny has still massively impacted Russian politics. He had his own YouTube channel where he posted very well-made videos exposing corruption of top officials in Russia, including President Putin himself. Tens of millions of Russians have watched his videos, so some of his ideas have seeped through into the mass of the population. But the Kremlin has repeatedly tried to silence him, most famously by allegedly poisoning him in August 2020, and he almost died. This is Alexei Navalny, some time after he was poisoned. Experts say it would be unlikely for Navalny to succeed Putin. The Putin regime has become very expert at shutting down the opposition. Vyacheslav Volodin went from being a Putin critic to a Putin supporter. He is the speaker of the Russian parliament and has gone so far as to say that without Putin, there is no Russia. And he's made sure the Kremlin can pass any law it wants to. He started off as a regional politician from Saratov, part of the Volga region that accounts for about 40% of Russia's population. Presumably, Volodin has more of a sense of the diversity of Russia, of the poverty that's present in most of Russia still, and would hopefully try and orient the Russian economy more towards national development and not fighting wars. That's something Nikolai Patrushev doesn't have. It would be just very difficult for the Kremlin to sell Patrushev to the Russian people as somebody who understands their daily lives. That's because he was a spy for 50 years. He even served with Putin in the KGB. Now he's the head of the Security Council. He's part of the inner circle of four or five officials who are closest to Putin. Experts say he's likely the mastermind behind Russia's recent wars. Nikolai Patrushev has been consistently hardline in opposing the West, 
and presumably he has pulled Putin more and more into that position. But like other senior officials, Patrushev's age may be his biggest issue. Patrushev is older, is a couple of years older than Putin. He would be an interim figure. As for who that real leader could actually be? We should expect the unexpected in the Putin transition. It's very possible that he will pick somebody that, who is not now a radar. But regardless of who comes next, Putin has said his successor should carry on his legacy and be somebody he trusts to look after Russia once he's gone.